Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Think Future. My name is Chris Calabugas, and once again, we're coming at you live from deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking innovation startups, the future. Not necessarily those, and not necessarily in that order. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop a note on Apple Podcasts. I would greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, we have created a bit of a monster. We have created a bit of a monster in APIs, so application programming interfaces, where machines can talk to one another. And in the talking to one another, can work together and what this has done is it allowed an explosion of apps we see software used to be monolithic Mon software would just work with itself and we work with its own database and you'd have to go into the software to work with the database and then that software would work with itself and that was it and then right around 2008 or so just before the explosion of Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that, we started seeing APIs, published APIs go nuts. So what would happen is that Twitter would publish an API, which would allow you to use them as a platform. You can build your system on top of Twitter and do all sorts of things in Twitter without actually using Twitter. And then APIs basically exploded exploded into the travel industry, exploded into the CRM industry, exploded into almost every SaaS industry. APIs and SaaS grew together at the same time. And a lot of companies put out an API, an open API at the same time as they put out their software. So not only could you use their software through their own interface, you could also build an interface on top of that API. So if you didn't like the interface they had, or if you wanted to interact with their tool without using their interface or doing it in some kind of automated way, say for example, you were a CRM provider and you wanted, and you were a lead, sort of lead, lead generation company and you wanted to automatically insert leads into a CRM like Salesforce, you could, you could write an API which would automatically write leads that were being generated into a customer's Salesforce, into a customer's Salesforce CRM using this API. So APIs were a boon to a lot of companies because it created a platform play. These companies didn't necessarily need to provide the entire interface, but they had allowed inputs and outputs to the interface, an automated way to do inputs and outputs into an interface. Now, the problem with that is, is that on the surface, it sounds great. It sounds fantastic because these companies create a platform and then other companies can come on top and build platforms on top of that. But then you have platforms on top of platforms, on top of platforms, on top of platforms, on top of platforms, on top of platforms. And there's this chain of code. So when you make changes up here, it's got to go through this API, which goes through this API, and then this API, and this API, and then back up through the chain. And some applications are supremely complicated, connecting to a whole bunch of APIs, and others are simpler, but they're almost every application today. Like if you have logged in to an, a SaaS product using Google or Facebook or Twitter, then you have used an API which connects through Twitter and uses their authentication mechanism to connect into this application, this SaaS app. And everyone, and most of the time it works great. When it works, when it works properly, it works great. But the problem is that the system is super complicated because if you think about it, there are all is there's, there's all these layers of APIs that need to work together. Like say, for example, you're using Kayak. Kayak connects to APIs, which connects to other APIs, which connects to other APIs, which connects to airlines, which connects to hotel databases, which connects to uh, car rental databases. Kayak is an aggregator of an aggregator of an aggregator and there's more aggravators so there's this intermediation occurring because every time along every layer at this step things are getting more and more complicated do you remember the days when if you wanted to go traveling you could just call a travel agent and say hey i want to go to puerto rico puerto vallarta and they would be able to find the perfect trip right away now it takes hours and hours and hours of work on kayak or some other ag tra travel aggregation site to for you to be able to find the perfect trip 
But the problem is, is that as long as all of this stuff works, it's great. But it's so many layers and there's so much complexity. If, if there's any failures in the middle, then everything explodes. I can tell you an example. I had a, I think I was traveling to Greece like uh, four or five years ago prior to the coronavirus. And I was looking at all these flights and I was going through kayak and I was, I saw the perfect flight and it flew, th it flew through Zurich, right? And I went ahead and booked it. And then when I was looking at it on the screen, it said, you know, this flight had a two hour layover in Zurich. And I said, that's fine. Two hours in Zurich is not a problem. But then when it went to the lower level API and then the lower level API to actually book it, it turns out that there was some kind of glitch in the API and the flight was not a two hour layover. It was a 14 hour layover. But because of this glitch in the APIs, that's what it, the ticket ended up being purchased for this 14 hour layover. And then when I finally got it in the email, I'm looking at it, I'm going, wait a second, that doesn't look right. This is happening every time, every day. This layering of API on top of API on top of API. So it's very dangerous when these APIs break. And I gotta tell you, stuff breaks all the time. You probably don't even realize how often stuff breaks. Sometimes people, it, sometimes it's fixed, it never even gets to you, but there's so much breakage in there. So there's gotta be a way. So startup founders, put your thinking caps on. There's gotta be a way of being able to improve the entire value chain of APIs and, and things like that. Because sure, you can build code in to make sure that these APIs are correct, but we are living in a world which is full of APIs and platforms on top of platforms on top of platforms on top of platforms. So it might not be sexy. It might not be, it might not get you on the cover of, uh, you know, Fast Company magazine, but figuring out some way to make those APIs work would be a huge boon. And I'm sure that it would be easy to build a billion dollar unicorn on that topic. That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future.